Wanted. Dead or alive. Not the words you want under a picture of your face, especially in a time where murdering is not only encouraged, but rewarded with a cash prize. Today on Nutty History, we're looking at how to get away with murder in the American Wild West. Before we pull the trigger, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more wild rides from history. You've probably heard of the concept of justifiable homicide on modern legal shows, but what exactly counted as justified was a tad different in the Wild West. Just look at the town homicide rates. While local government and law enforcement were often lacking, frontier cowboys had their own honor code. These unspoken rules ranged from never ordering a drink weaker than whiskey to defending oneself whenever necessary. And how do you defend your honor in an old western town? Duel it out. The popularized gun duels of the Wild West weren't the everyday occurrence they're made out to be in the movies. But most killings that occurred in these towns were between willing combatants. One such altercation occurred in the town square of Springfield, Missouri in 1865, between former pals Wild Bill Hickok and Davis Tutt. Man, names sure weren't what they used to be. Things turned sour between the two after Hickok was rumored to have fathered a child with Tut's sister, and Tut was seen cozying up to Hickok's lover. The feud, like many of the Wild West, worsened over a game of cards. After attempting to help Hickok's poker opponents and failing, Tut claimed that Hickok owed him $35 from a past game. Hickok insisted that it was only $25. Apparently, Tut was feeling petty, because rather than squash a $10 beef, he then stole Hickok's prized golden pocket watch off of the poker table as as collateral and boasted about town that he would wear it into the town square. Hickok replied that Tut shouldn't come across the square unless dead men can walk. Tut, you need some ice for that burn? Both men had sealed their fate according to the code of the West. Tut humiliated Hickok by wearing the watch and implying that he didn't pay his gambling debts. And with his threat, Hickok all but ensured a duel would take place. Since Tut chickening out would ruin his own reputation, the two men met the following morning for the duel. Tut reportedly reached for his pistol first and both fired a single shot. Tut's missed, but Hickok's did not. A jury was convened and Hickok was tried, kinda, for manslaughter. The law stipulated that mutual combat could not be self-defense, especially considering Hickok showed up gun in hand, ready to kill. Still, the jury decided to abide by the unwritten law of fair fight and deemed that since Tut was the initial aggressor, Hickok was totally within reason to shoot him dead over 10 bucks. After deliberating for about an hour or so, he was acquitted of all charges. Even if you were caught and jailed in the Wild West, your chances of escape weren't too shabby. The lockups of these rudimentary towns didn't exactly require Shawshank-level planning. Sometimes there was only one guard you needed to outsmart or befriend. Billy the Kid, arguably one of the most dangerous outlaws of the era, managed to escape jail three times. You'd think they'd keep a closer eye on that one. Prior to his most famous escape, Billy the Kid, aka Henry McCarty, was wanted for the murder of the Lincoln County, New Mexico Sheriff William J. Brady. His poster advertised with a $500 bounty. After being captured by a posse, McCarty was convicted and sentenced to death, which he awaited in the Lincoln County Jail on the top floor of the courthouse. In April 18. In 1881, one of the deputies decided to take five prisoners out for a bite across the street, leaving one deputy in charge of guarding young Billy. Seeing an opportunity, McCarty asked to use the outhouse behind the courthouse. As he was walking up the stairs ahead of the deputy to return to his cell, he ducked around a corner and slipped free of his handcuffs. He then beat the surprised guard with the handcuffs, stole his revolver, and shot him in the back. When the other deputy returned, Billy the Kid killed him as well, escaping capture for over two months before he was shot and killed by Sheriff Pat Garrett. Quite the rap sheet for a 21-year-old. With so many new towns popping up in the American West due to economic interests, it was hard for law or order to play catch up. Newly formed governments and barely formed towns weren't always the most stable, and low salaries for lawmen resulted in rampant corruption, with some even turning outlaws themselves. While Wild West law enforcement certainly had their work cut out for them, in some cases the line between the good guys and the bad guys was as blurry as your vision after a day at the saloon. The 1881 OK Corral shootout occurred in Tombstone, Arizona, a rapidly growing mining town aptly named, at least based on its rates of violence. 
The cut and dried version, Town Marshal Virgil Earp and his brothers went to disarm members of the Cochise County Cowboys, a gang of outlaws who were breaking the local gun law by openly carrying their weapons through the town. In the ensuing gunfight, three members of the Cowboys were killed, and Team Earp was cleared of any wrongdoing. Of course, there is always a gray area. A feud had been simmering for years between the stagecoach Robin Cowboys and the Earp brothers, with death threats being made on both sides. Supporters of both sides gave conflicting reports on who fired first. The Cowboys claimed to have had their arms up in the air, and that several of them, including one who was killed, were unarmed to begin with. Virgil Earp had also recently deputized his brothers into law officials, in a bit of nepotism that seems sketchy. The Cochise County Cowboys, one of the first organized crime syndicates in America, later sought revenge, maiming Virgil Earp in an ambush and killing his brother Morgan, shooting him through the glass door of a billiard parlor. The suspects weren't indicted, since they provided alibis that were backed up by their fellow gang members. Sure, that seems legit. Virgil Earp avenged his brother's death by forming a federal posse and going on a famed vendetta ride. In the Wild West, sheriffs or other lawmen might assemble posses to fight outlaws or enact their own brand of justice. Earp's federal posse managed to hunt down and murder four cowboy members. That certainly doesn't sound legal, and under local law, it wasn't. While the federal posse carried warrants for cowboy members, a large posse sent by the local sheriff chased Earp and his friends with their own warrants. Luckily, the sheriff's posse never caught up to Earp. However, you didn't have to be a lawman or even a lawman's buddy to get away with murder. Many average Joe citizens took it upon themselves to become judge, jury, and executioner, forming mobs to kill alleged outlaws without any trial or legal process. The Wild West attracted bandits and outlaws who found quick money robbing banks, trains, stagecoaches, and travelers. Many deviants looking to avoid the law made their way westward, and the vast amount of open-range land, remote passages, and outlaw-friendly towns all made great spots for fugitives. Some settlements created their own committees of vigilantes to enact the often harsh frontier justice. In Montana, a particularly vigilant group of vigilantes formed in Bannock in 1863 after a spike in robberies and murders. The suspected culprits were a gang of road agent outlaws known as the Innocents. Well, I guess they're pleading not guilty. After the capture and confession of one of the gang's associates, who the vigilantes then hanged, they determined the leader of the gang to be none other than Henry Plummer, their own sheriff. The Montana vigilantes executed Plummer and continued to murder willy-nilly until the territory became a state in 1889. In a posthumous trial for Henry Plummer, the jury split 6-6 based on the evidence, meaning if it had happened during his lifetime, he would have been a free man. It's worth noting, though, that before his tenure as sheriff and possibly gang leader, Plummer also killed three people in three separate instances, supposedly in self-defense. So getting away with murder, at least in the legal sense, might have been a safe bet in the Wild West, if you played your cards right. But if that murder wasn't up to code, your own untimely demise might soon follow. Do you think you'd be able to steer clear of the squabbles and skirmishes to survive the Wild West? Let us know in the comments, along with other nutty times you'd like to hear about next. Thanks for watching. Nutty History.